Hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play Sega Saturn games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So for today's video, you're already going to need to have both Dev Mode and RetroArch already installed in your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. That's not something I'm going to be showing you in today's video, although I will be leaving a card on screen to my previous video where I show you step by step how to do everything. If you have been following along to my previous RetroArch videos, we might be using a slightly newer version than what you have installed at the moment. The process is still very similar to what we did on the previous ones, although you can feel free to go and update your RetroArch version if you need. Again, a card on screen for that as well. From this point to be able to play Sega Saturn games on our Xbox, there is a couple things we're going to be needing. One, we're going to be needing our external drive, we're going to be needing some BIOS files, and we're going to be needing some game files. I'm going to be checking you through some of the steps for that in today's video, although the first thing we're also going to be needing on our Xbox is a file explorer. I'm first going to be showing you how to install that. From this point, we're going to need to load up our Xbox Series X, and we're going to need to know the IP address for the remote access on the bottom right. This is what we had to use to install RetroArch previously, but we're going to need to locate back to this website again to bring over some extra files that we're going to need to play PlayStation 1 games. From this point, we're going to be opening up our web browser and we're going to be locating to the URL that we had set previously from our Xbox. I have just logged in and I'm right here right now. So for us to bring our BIOS file to RetroArch, it is technically possible to do it from the web portal. However, I've always had a lot of issues with that, so I would recommend doing it through a file browser instead. So what we're going to be doing is installing a file browser on our Xbox through the web portal so we can actually transfer our BIOS files via the USB over to our Xbox directly. So what we're going to be doing to do this is come to this link. As always, links is in the description down below. And what we're going to be doing is downloading a File Explorer application that we're going to be installing on our Xbox Dev Portal. So come to this link, simply click download, and then your download will begin. Once your download is done, we're going to be coming back to our Xbox Dev Portal. We're going to be coming to the My Games and Apps on the Home section right here. We're then going to be selecting the add button here and we're going to be choosing our my explorer file that appx that we just downloaded previously click open select your file select next then select start and then your file will start to install now this can take a couple of seconds before it fully installs and opens up on your xbox and just like that the file should be installed so for our bios files we're going to be needing a file named in this exact order it needs to be mpr-17933.bin and this is exactly what we need for our sega saturn bios as usual i will not be sharing any download links for this if you want to go online and download it you can feel free to do that otherwise you can feel free to dump and create a backup of your existing sega saturn but it needs to be named exactly like this otherwise it will not work inside retroarch from this point we're ready to talk about games and again i'm not going to be sharing any download links to any games you can feel free to download these if you want to search online for that otherwise you can create a backup or dump of any games that you already have either of these methods should work just fine if you are like me however and you've downloaded your games they will most likely come in a .7 zip or a .rar format i currently have my game here in a .rar format and sadly we need to extract these before we go over to retroarch Sadly, this cannot be done directly inside Windows, so we actually need a separate software to be able to extract these files out. So that's where we're going to need to either use WinRare or 7-Zip. Personally, I'm going to be using 7-Zip, although both of these will be linked in the description down below. To extract your game, the process in WinRare is very similar. All we need to do is right-click our game, hover over 7-Zip. We're simply going to be clicking Extract Files or Extract Here. I'm going to be using Extract Here, and then our game is going to start to extract out. Now, depending on how big your game is and depending on your computer, this can take a couple seconds to a couple minutes. So we just have to be patient here while this extracts. Once your game extracts out, it will most likely come out in a .iso file, a .q file, and it's possible there's going to be a few mp3 files here as well. And that's exactly what we're going to be needing for RetroArch. We're looking for a .iso or a disk image file that we can bring over to RetroArch and play games directly from there. Now, depending on how your game is set up and if there's a bunch of extra .mp3 files, you may actually need to transfer them to the internal storage on your Xbox. So I will be showing you that later in today's video. If this is an issue, if this becomes an issue, you can transfer them to the internal storage. From this point, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting all of these files in our external drive. We're going to be continuing over from RetroArch and we're going to be transferring over all the necessary files. And then we're going to be continuing on in RetroArch. So this video is brought to you by me. Today, I'm going to be sponsoring my own video at my new merch line. This is going to be the first t-shirt I'm going to be launching for the channel. It's a very nice quality print that you can get from Teespring. Everything is linked right below the video here and all videos on my channel. It comes in a number of different colors. You can get it in a hoodie, different women's style t-shirts, stickers. It'll definitely support the channel if you can check it out and I'd really appreciate it. 
let's jump right into the video. So from this point, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be launching my Files Explorer. Once this opens up, we're gonna be using our left thumbstick. We're gonna be coming here to removable storage device to where we put our BIOS files before. From this point, we need to locate to our BIOS files. So for me, it's in here, in my Xbox folder, in my BIOS folder. Then I'm gonna be scrolling down to Sega Saturn. And here I have my mpr-17933.bin. We need to click the start button. We're gonna be clicking copy file. From this point, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going over to our internal storage. To do this, we're gonna be coming here to the left. We're gonna be clicking on isolated storage. Once we're here, we're gonna be brought directly inside my My Files Explorer application. We need to actually go one up here. So we're gonna be coming here to the top bar, to the URL. We're gonna be clicking on packages. Once your packages opens up, we're gonna be looking for our RetroArch folder, which should start with 1E4C, which for me is at the very top right here. So all we need to do is hover over this, click the A button. Once this opens up, we're gonna be looking for the local state folder. We simply need to hover over and click A. From this point, we're gonna be scrolling down. To scroll down, you can use your right thumbstick and we're gonna be looking for the system folder. We're gonna be coming here, we're gonna be clicking A again. And here's where we can put all of our BIOS files. So I have all of my previous BIOS from the previous consoles I've used. What we're gonna be doing is pasting our BIOS file in here. To do this, what we need to do is come here, click the start button, or simply gonna be clicking paste. And then we're gonna be adding our BIOS file in here. As you can see, it's just been pasted here. And just like that, it's been added. Now, depending on how your game is set up and if there's a bunch of extra .mp3 files, you may actually need to transfer them to the internal storage on your xbox to do this the first thing we're going to be doing is locating back to our retroarch folder right here we're going to be coming here we're then going to be scrolling down until we see our local state folder and what we're going to be doing is creating a new folder here called games i already have one created but if you'd like to create a new folder come up here to the top right click on the three dots option and basically click create a new folder and you can name it whatever you'd like and what we can do is transfer games inside here that will basically put everything inside one folder so what i recommend doing is putting all of your games in folders or after in a single iso file you can just leave them here again i'd only recommend doing this if you're having issues running games or you're getting a lot of loading speed errors this can help load your games a lot quicker and it's definitely something i'd recommend doing depending on what you want to do so from this point what you need to do is locate your game so for me i'm going to be backing out of here i'm going to be coming back to my removable storage i'm going to be locating to where my saturn games are so what i have right here is my castlevania folder which basically contains all of my castlevania files what i'm going to be doing is highlighting and copying this entire folder by simply clicking the start button click copy folder, and then I'm gonna be pasting this inside the RetroArch folder that we just created before for our games. So we're on it. once I'm here, I'm simply gonna be clicking the start button again. I'm gonna be clicking paste, and then my game is gonna be copying in here. From this point, we're gonna be launching RetroArch. Once RetroArch opens up, we're gonna be coming to our main menu right here. We're then gonna be clicking on the load core option here at the very top, and we're gonna be scrolling down until we see Sega. And here we're gonna be looking for Sega-Saturn and in brackets, your boss. And what we're gonna be doing is clicking the A button to select this. Our core has now been loaded. From this point, we're gonna be clicking down one. We're gonna be coming to the load content option and we're gonna be locating to where our games are. Once you're in load content, there's two ways to load up games. As I mentioned, you might wanna transfer them to your internal drive if you're having issues. If you're locating and playing them from your external drive, you can simply use your E drive right here. Or if you're using your internal drive, you can scroll down here to your Q drive. We can come here to the games folder and here we can just locate to our game. So I have them right here in this folder. And I'm gonna be loading up my ISO format. It's the exact same if you're using your external drive, you just need to locate to wherever your games are there. We're then going to have to select a core if you have multiple cores that can read this file type. In this case, it's a .iso, so a lot of cores can read this. But thankfully, since we already have the Sega Saturn core selected, it should show up here at the very top. We simply need to click the A button from this point to open this up. Our screen is going to go black for a couple of seconds while our core loads up. And then our game should eventually load. And just like that, we're going to start playing on the Sega Saturn. Now, from this point, if you would like to open up your menu, you can use your menu combination. For me, it's down and select. And we're going to be opening up our menu. And here we can see all of our default RetroArch settings. What we're going to be doing from this point is scrolling down until we see the options tab like i have right here we're going to be clicking the a button to open this up and here we're going to have a couple of core specific options for this one there isn't too many the first option we have is a frame skip so by default this is off and for the most part i don't really like frame skipping so i leave this off but you can feel free to enable this if you would like we can force a hle bios again as mentioned here use it at your own risk it can cause more issues than it solves and it will require a restart to open up we can enable the add-on cartridge again this is only for specific Specific games depending on what you want to do you can feel free to turn this on you have a couple of options with this the 1 MB RAM and the 4 MB RAM this will also require a restart we then have the six player port add-on for one and two and then finally we have the number of treads by default it is set to four unless you're having issues with this I'd recommend leaving it on four for the Xbox Series S and X we can go all the way up to 16 that's the most we have on our current CPU however this is a nice option to have if you're having issues with some games running a little bit slower you can feel free to come in here and enable this the last thing I'd recommend doing is 
creating a game playlist. You can see I have one on screen right now for my PlayStation. It basically concatenates all of your games into one nice section here so you can really easily select them. It can automatically assign a core to each one of them and it makes your RetroX experience a lot better, especially if you're using a lot of different cores and consoles. And it's definitely something I'd recommend doing. Again, I'm not gonna be showing you that in today's video, although I will be leaving a card on screen to my previous video where I show you step-by-step -step how to do that. It's definitely something I'd recommend. And if you want to support the channel, feel free to click the join button. You can become a member of the channel for as little as one euro. It'll really help out the channel and push more videos in the future. You can click the join button right underneath any video on the channel to join the channel. And it's really easy to do. Anyway, guys, it's as easy as that to play Sega Saturn games from your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.